recently I saw um, Jet Tila on um, a, a show. I think it was um, Kelly and Ryan in the morning when I had off of work <laughs> one day. And um, he wrote this book, 101 Thai Dishes You Need to Cook Before You Die. So I was like, I think I need that book and I'm going to make a Thai dish. So I found a recipe in here for drunken noodles and I'm going to try to make it, okay? I'm just going to do it like I said. I like to try new things, so I'm just going to give it a try. So first it says to start with the sauce. What I have in here. is a, um, a tablespoon of white sugar and a teaspoon of minced garlic I started in the bowl with. So I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a sweet soy sauce. It's used in a lot of Thai dishes apparently. So that's one, two. Mm. I can see that it's thicker than soy sauce. Then you use one of oyster sauce. This is oyster sauce. This is thick too. Mm. Okay. And then, ooh, that smells good. And then you use the fish sauce. That's one and a half tablespoons. Maybe I should take this top off of it. Maybe it'll get that, help get that out. Okay, that's one. Hmm. I'm gonna take this off. Because it's, it's very saucy. <laughs> and this is a half of a tablespoon of the fish sauce. Ooh, and then we do one teaspoon of Thai Sriracha. So this is actually from Thailand. I got the product of Thailand. It's Thai Sriracha. Who knew? I didn't know. But now that I'm getting into it, it's going to be interesting to learn, right? So, open that up. Mmm. Yum. Okay, so, well, maybe I'll just use this spoon to mix it all up. Use this spoon, which will get all the sriracha out. And then use this spoon. Just gonna get all the sugar, I think. Oh, and the, so the chiffonade, I actually did this in a video. I'll show you right now. Okay, so the recipe calls for six to eight Thai basil leaves. I'm gonna show y'all the rest of the bunch, but this is Thai basil leaves. Um, and I got six to eight. I cleaned them. I dried them a, a little bit. I mean, they're still a little moist, but um, I got them all in a line. And what I learned from, um, and it's a, a person who came from a Italian family years ago about cutting basil, is you just put them on top of each other and then you roll it in a ball like in a um, roll like this, and then you just slice it. See how it's making like a finely chopped chiffonade? That's what they mean. They say chiffonade. It's just finely chopped. Uh, sliced like that. I need to get these gloves off, I think. Just didn't want to get... Let's see. Okay, see? That's a chiffonade. That's a chiffonade. Chiffonade. So you can add the chiffonade to the mixture. It calls for six to eight Thai basil leaves. So I talked about the Thai basil leaves in a video too. And then you mix all this up together. Just use this spoon. You can, I can feel the um, the sugar, the granules of sugar, just dissolving all with that. You can hear it, I'm sure. 
sure my friend Rebecca, if you're watching, you love the sound of the scraping. I should want to get it all, you know, mixed together. I probably should just use a whisk, huh? I don't know if I have a whisk that small. That looks like it's, that just sounds like it's getting dissolved, huh? Mm. smell really good. Okay, I'll be back to start the dish. So the recipe called for 480 grams, I think, um, or four cups of fresh rice noodles, but I couldn't find fresh rice noodles, so I bought dried uh, rice noodles, and so I looked online how to cook it because I can't read any of the, there was really no instructions, but it says to bring a pot of um, water to a boil, and I'll put some salt in here. There's actually salt nowhere else in this recipe. So it says to put, turn the boiling water off, right? And then put the pasta in there. Oh, that was a big jump. And I'm gonna use tongs to try to separate. It says to try to keep them separated. Keep it separated. But you see how it is separated right now? So it said six, Six to ten minutes. So six to ten minutes, that would be eight twelve or eight oh eight. So we'll taste it at eight oh eight and see how it is. It's said to just keep them separated. Let me just let it cook. That looks separated, huh? They're doing a pretty good job of being separated, I think. But you want, you know, I had a, I had a smaller pot than this, but it's it's holding something else right now. So I'm using this big, extra big pot, but it doesn't matter because you see how much space it's taking up. It just needs the pasta just needs space to move around and take up the the heat and the moisture and get a little bit more moist. So we're going to let that sit about six to eight minutes. I'm going to get started on the rest of the sauce in about three more minutes. So that way it may be, or maybe I'll wait about four minutes. Okay. Okay. So now that I got the noodles done, I, uh, I cooked them actually for 12 minutes um, because they still, they tasted like they needed the full time. But now I'm going to take three tablespoons of uh, an, a vegetable oil, a canola oil, something you can heat um, on a high heat because you have this on high. Oh, yeah. That's a little bit too much probably, huh? I'll just soak it up with a napkin. Soak a little bit up with a napkin. I'm sure it'll be fine, right? Alright, you get that really hot. It says in the recipe, heat the oil over high heat. When you see a wisp of white smoke, add the garlic. The garlic is sitting here minced. It was uh, two to three cloves of garlic minced. I had maybe about six cloves, so I minced it all and then I took a teaspoon of that uh, garlic out for that sauce that's sitting there waiting. And, um, Sauce is probably gonna take a while, huh? Oh, look, you see the white smoke? Is, am I just imagining that? See that? Maybe I'm just imagining the white, uh, cause that's from the camera, I bet. <laughs> I bet that's from the camera. We're gonna wait a little bit longer for that high heat. Okay, so then I see the little wisp of white smoke and the oil looks super ready. So, yeah, there we go. So we do that, we put this in here until the, the garlic gets browned, lightly browned, is what the recipe calls for. So that looks like it's pretty lightly browned, right? Then you add the chili, oh, I don't know, it's still getting there. That looks good, right? 
So the recipe calls for thinly sliced um, serrano peppers. I'm sorry, let me... Oh, serrano chilies. Okay. So the recipe calls for um, thinly sliced serrano chilies. So what I did is I got some serrano chilies and I'm taking all the seeds and the inner part out like that. I find that the, if you cut it like in fourths, it's easier to deal with, but that's just me. So maybe the peppers are supposed to be larger slices. I don't know if you're supposed to keep them more in a hole. But if you take the, if you keep the seeds in, it makes it, it's going to make it spicier, just so you know. And then you just slice. That's a thin slice, that's what I would think. You don't want really that much more, I think, a good bite of it in your dish. You know what I mean? Y'all might like bigger, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> I wore gloves to do this because um, it's got heat. I can even feel, I can tell, my eyes can tell it has heat. So I want to just get this in a little dish. I'm going to find a dish and put this in and then take these gloves off. And then you add the chilies. And the eggs. I'm going to actually use the spatula for this part. You add the eggs and you scramble that. You scramble them for about a minute. Get all that in there. Mm, that's look, that looks so good. Okay, and then you add the shrimp and the onion. What I'm going to do is add the onion first. just slice it's one white a half of a white onion I use the I use the big part the big half which obviously didn't cut it in half it was a really big white onion so I just use the big half because I like onions and then you saute this with the shrimp until the shrimp are lightly or pink. That's what it says. Okay, I'm just gonna let that sit. Get some more knife onion in there. Holding constantly. So it says holding constantly until the shrimp turn pink about a minute. They're getting there. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I guess this helps the onion cook too, you know? Mm -hmm. And it keeps the egg, I guess, separated. <laughs> There's that word again. But you see, oh gosh, now you can smell all the all the flavors penetrating so nicely together. Oh my goodness. Mmm, that smells so good. Says to fold constantly. It seems to be taking a while, maybe because I'm using a wok. But I figured a wok would be better if you're throwing the noodles in here. Mm. Hmm. Some of these shrimp are being very um, hard-headed about cooking. <laughs> okay. Looks good. This one looks like it's getting a little light pink. You don't want to overcook the shrimp. And still there's some more time in this pan. So I'm going to go ahead and add the sauce to it. Mm. Yeah, add 
the sauce. Mm. And then you add the noodles. a good amount. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Maybe um, not use all of them. Mm -hmm. And then you just stir all this together. Yum! <laughs> that looks good. You stir it enough so that all of this gets cooked. I mean coated. Right? So that everything has a good coating on it. I think that's enough noodles. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call it enough. And the recipe called for more noodles. I think that looks like enough. And then you cook that for another minute. Well, it's supposed to cook, combine it for like three minutes and then cook it for a minute. <laughs> hmm. I used about 12 shrimp in this recipe. The recipe called for six to eight, but I thought it needed a little bit more. I'm gonna add the end of it right now, which is the basil leaves, smushed enough for one cup. So that's whole basil leaves and the grape tomatoes, a half a cup, sliced in half. Halved. And then we're going to cook it for another minute. Mm. That looks really good. <laughs> it until it's the clock says 823 maybe 824 hmm. I don't know who am I to argue with a recipe from someone who's actually Thai <laughs> chiffonade. Yum. That looks really good. Alright. Mmm, that smells really good. I bet you I could put some of my green onions in this dish that I have in the garden. All right, it's 8.24, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna dish myself up some. So, where the tongs go? Here they are. So I'm gonna take some noodles. Mm. Make sure I get some of that tomato, and the egg, the shrimp, the onion. like an onion right there. Alright. I'm going to try this. It just says to uh, serve hot. So here we go. That was pretty easy. The longest thing was waiting for the noodles to be tender enough to cook with the dish. Everything else and prepping for it and then everything else just really flew. So, mmm. You know, this looks so good. So glad y'all joined me for this. This is something that's new. You know, I, I said that when I first started the show, I really like to try new stuff. 
This isn't about me being a chef and teaching y'all how to do stuff. It's about, you know, trying new things. Okay, wait. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. That's really good. Mmm. It's not too spicy. It's not too sweet. It's not too... It's just perfect. Not too salty. Mmm. Perfect. I maybe could have used a little less noodles, actually. Mmm. Well, I'm going to take a bite of shrimp. Mmm. And then a bite of tomato. Mmm. Y'all, I want to say one thing about this before we go. I always love drunken noodles, but I never knew why they were called drunken noodles. So I researched it when I decided I was going to make this, and there's really no answer. There's no alcohol in the dish. Oh, speaking of alcohol, I do have something to drink. I'll be right back. So I found this um, this cold sake um, when I was looking for all these ingredients, and I thought I would try this. It's called uh, Yuki Kaje. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, Yuki Kaje. Um, and then it's Snow Shadow. Um, I love cold sake much better than hot sake. What I was told is they heat up the sake to disguise the flavor of it not really being that great a sake. I don't know because I still like the same cold sake better than... If you take the same cold, same sake and you make it cold, it's better to me tasting than the hot sake. But I do like um, sake that's, um, that's filtered so that it's crisper, you know? Um, a lot of people, I mean, they have great sake that's not filtered and people love it. But to me, it's too sweet. I love... A, to have something that's not sweet, but maybe with um, spicier Asian food, right? Like if this was a spicy, if this was a spicier dish, the sweet sake, the sweeter sweetness in the sake would probably help the the, the spiciness of the dish. So kanpai. Oh, this is not that's not how you say it in Thailand, but that's how you say bottoms up in Japanese. So since Japanese sake is a Japanese thing, I'm just gonna say kanpai. Mmm, wow, that's really cold. I put it in. I put it in the uh, freezer while I was finishing up the meal, and I think it'll go really well with this. Mmm, mmm. Yum. Mmm. I had to take a big bite of something, huh? So I hope y'all enjoy joining me for trying to make something new today, as always. And I hope you join me again for another episode of Cooking with Cleavage. Okay, so the recipe also calls for one cup of Thai basil leaves, light, loosely packed. So you don't, it doesn't say anything about cutting them. They don't mean that you have to cut them. I don't know if you ever had this dish, but you know it's got that, that, um, that piece of basil that stayed whole that's just sauteed in there. That's what I'm thinking. So... These are the leaves. This is Thai basil. You see how it's purple stalk? It's got a purple stalk to it. That's what they're talking about with Thai basil. I We tried to go to Hong Kong market. Those of you from New Orleans will understand what I mean when I say Hong Kong market. It's on the West Bank of New Orleans. And I couldn't find any Thai basil there. So today I went to Vietnamese village out in New Orleans East on Elise Forche Boulevard. There was a little hole in the wall, you know, corner store and had Thai basil, so I would go there. But this is what they mean by loosely packed. You just throw it in there and you make sure you just take the leaves and not the stem. You can also make um, simple syrup with the stems. You can just use the stems of a, you can make it all hot, you know, make you can heat up the water with the sugar and then steep steep the stem in there and take the stems out and then you have simple syrup to make drinks and stuff out of. They said sometimes people, maybe I'll figure out a drink to make with a um, Thai basil next episode or something like that. But um, yeah, I mean you could do anything with it but that's what they mean when they say and I'm putting these flowers in there too, because I don't see how that would be bad. You just loosely pack it like that. Take that stem off like that. They said that this the uh, Thai basil, the difference is that you could use, it kind of does have a little minty smell to it, 
right now. And they said one one site I found said that you could substitute it, but maybe may supplement it with a little bit of um, mint. And I was like, I don't know, that doesn't sound right. I'm gonna try to really find some Thai basil, you know. They said it's a little bit more anise. Isn't that interesting? Because I do like drinking the anise flavored liqueurs. So it gives it like a pungent flavor that you can't get with sweet basil. But they all, it, I another, found another site that if you said, if they, you substitute it with sweet basil, you have to um, cut down on the sugar in the recipe if there is some. But I'm gonna do a couple more, but that's what I was just gonna show y'all, how to loosely pack it. And you do it until the cup is full. Mm -hmm.